Hi guys. All right. Today, as I mentioned, we are going to start talking a little bit more about using the Bible to your advantage because a lot of us have been taught wrong and the truth is because we don't know how to use it, we struggle in life and there's absolutely no reason for that. So today's talk is using fear as the beginning of your wisdom. A lot of times what happens when you go through traumatic events or when you repeat the same history over and over again and then you discover Neville and you learn that everything is a mirror of you or you discover the truth movement and everything that leads up to people like Neville because he's not the only teacher in the world, obviously not. When you start to do this, you will learn that everything you have to take responsibility for in yourself. And so what ends up happening as you become conscious of it, it means that you're going to have to become aware of what happened when you were unconscious because everyone has fallen asleep at the wheel. This is by design. So it says, Adam fell into a deep sleep and never once does it say Adam woke up, but Adam is mankind. In other words, in order to be on earth, you had to fall asleep at the wheel in order to exist within the dream. The dreamer is the same, always, but you exist within dreams after dreams after dreams and there's an awakening that must happen. So when you were unconscious that you were in this experience, you learned a lot and fear, okay, became what you used when you did not want to repeat a cycle, okay? So when you use fear as the beginning of the wisdom, the most important thing to understand is this. Many people fear repeating the same thing over again. Cindy, I gave my heart every single time. Every single time I did it, I got screwed over. And now I'm finally healing and I'm afraid to go through that again. I'm afraid, I'm afraid. Well, here's the thing. When it comes to love and relationships, fear taints your perception. Fear is actually not the blank slate that you're looking for because fear includes all the things that you went through and your triggers and your responses. So if you're afraid that all guys cheat, right, because a few of them cheated on you in the past and you don't understand what you did wrong, then you're going to fear the next guy cheating, which is not a blank slate. And it's not allowing you to be present with someone. Unfortunately, in these situations, this is when a lot of times what happens is we end up projecting our wounds and, and bleeding on people who did not cut us. So it's very important to understand that fear must be the beginning of your wisdom. It must be. There are no... It, 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 it's, it's, not even, it's not even up for debate. It belongs at the beginning not after the fact, after you went through something. It belongs at the beginning of all your experiences because you know what not to do and what not to do is a treasure if you learn from it. As long as you learn from it, history does not need to repeat itself. And you can leave it at the beginning where you're able to enjoy your experience. But in all things, whether it is love, whether it's something you want and you're afraid to go after it, whatever it is, fear must go. And it must be used only as the beginning of your wisdom. Meaning, let's say that in business you did not use discernment and you just trusted everyone. So open doors, you just trusted everyone. And suddenly you found that everyone was taking advantage of you. Okay, you use that to the beginning of your wisdom so that you can spot the ones that took advantage and you can see the characteristics and you can spot the ones that didn't and you can touch your true blues, right? But you want to give everyone the freedom and liberty to be themselves and show you how they show up in your lives. If they don't value you, you will know it by how they behave. And so that needs to be taken into account and used to your advantage. This is what it means to use fear as the beginning of your wisdom. It makes perfect sense. If I put it at the beginning, I will not repeat. If I don't understand what happened, it will repeat until I do. So then with all that getting, you are getting understanding of I am first cause. Everything that I received is a consequence of that. 
and I must take ownership of that. If in love, you fear love because you're treated so badly, that is your time and opportunity to look into yourself and go, oh, I treated myself badly and I need to change this. And now that I will make a conscious effort to change this and I will make a conscious effort not to fall back into my pattern, now I will take this opportunity, okay, to use this as the beginning of my wisdom. It's very, very important that you understand what that means. Because everything that you did when you were unconscious, your ego is going to tempt you to want to make you feel guilty over it. You're going to beat yourself up, but I know better. Hindsight is 20, 20. Okay? Do not beat yourself up for what you didn't know because everyone, everyone, including myself, had to enter into this world without waking up and had to discover the consequences of my actions, cause and effect, and as a result, I may have developed fear over the painful experiences. If instead I realize how I made the painful experiences, I learn from them, I do not repeat them, meaning that life doesn't have to be a struggle. It only repeats and you only fear when you do not change. Your soul actually sets off a warning. You are straying away. If it feels bad, you're not thinking correctly. If it feels bad, mm, mm, mm. you're doing something to yourself you're not paying attention to. And if you try to ignore that and pour all of yourself into another human being without doing it for yourself first, you are going to learn the consequences of those actions. Because that great person that you thought really loved you, doesn't, can't, can't, cannot be what you are not. It's like, I hear this all the time and I'm like, I want to smack them so hard. I cannot help it when I hear this, okay? When someone says, talks about a special love and someone goes, if only I knew how to get that. Really? That's all I ever tell you how to do. That's all I ever tell you have to do. And the fact that you said that. <sighs> last night I had a wonderful conversation with a group and in the group in the mastermind and she mirrored me perfectly when she said this this one individual god bless her she she spoke my mind she said i have no patience for women who don't understand their value who are clearly adapt like able to do it all and has the nerve to cry over someone who doesn't see their value like i have no patience for that and i smiled to myself because i was like yeah <laughs> hi me that's how i feel Okay, you're going to learn the consequence of that action the hard way or the easy way. I'm not lying to you and no amount of forcing someone to love you will ever be love. And even if you get it to conform because someone is weak minded and you with your with your power took over, it's never going to last. It's never going to last, baby doll. Because the first thing you did was want to make someone love you when they didn't automatically. That should tell you right away that's not love. That should tell you right away that's not love. And that's what's wrong with this community sometimes. They try to pass off not love for love, take advantage of your weakness, take advantage of the fact that you're willing to shell out money, unlimited amount of money to these people. To these people who teach you not love in the effort to seek love. It's not how it works. Not how it works. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry to break your little hearts. That's not how it works. You must become what you want and stand still and then they will mirror that. And when you stand for your worth, when you stand for who you are, when you truly value that, you will receive what you were doing but as long as you make it about them you are going to learn the hard way what fear means mm -hmm. because those painful experiences they're going to keep repeating <laughs> until you develop a true phobia of being in a, any kind of connection at all and whose fault would that be it's not about fault but honestly take ownership take ownership so let fear be the beginning of your wisdom okay let fear be the beginning of your wisdom. 
Do not beat yourself up for the things you did unconsciously when you weren't aware of it. Certainly, I'm not asking you to do that, okay? That's not, your ego's gonna wanna do that anyway. I'm warning you, try not to let that happen for too long. And the rest is, remember, it does not repeat if you learned and changed the lesson. That's how fear can be at the beginning and allows you to enjoy the present moment. It exists outside of you. You're the barrier, okay? The fear exists outside of you. There's a vault. See, God told you everything. That's the crazy thing. Like all of this is written in the Bible and you don't even know how your universe works because you don't know their Bible. <laughs> that was me too, you guys. That's why I laughed. Honestly, it's kind of funny. I resisted that book so much. And then uh, God told me, look, look. And I opened the book and literally I have these mystical experiences all the time. God and I are best friends, okay? I know you guys cannot understand that unless you're best friends with God inside of you. You won't understand that. But God and I are best friends. And literally one day I opened the book and there was a floating key. It's like I'm giving you the in the kingdom. So there was a kingdom and then there was a key above it. And I knew that was my mind sending me a message from the spiritual world I was seeing with my third eyes. And basically what God was saying is if you, if you take advantage of our partnership right now, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. And I understood all the symbolism. He didn't use words. He used pictures in that moment to get to me because I'm so resistant to the book. And I was like, all right, see what you got. So see, I was just skeptical enough. And this is God talking to me, right? So for me to stand here and say, listen, this book, this specific book is the manual for you to have a good life, for you to understand how to work with your darkness and your light, how to understand your subconscious is the only thing on display. This whole entire world only makes sense as source. Only makes sense as source. I'm so sorry. Everything, as long as you are a confused human who doesn't understand the world and it's like, ah, I just don't understand how fucked up the world is and da 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 and la 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 and everything is so wrong with it. Yeah. That's your own darkness, darling. Your subconscious is on display and none of this makes sense until you understand that you are the source, you are the light of the world and everything you see is everything that you are at once. There are going to be things you're not identifying with there that appear outside of you and every single human being is a look inward. And so as you do this, you will unify and you will not be afraid of connection. You will not be afraid of judgment and you will not be afraid of connection. You will also stand real hard on your boundaries. Okay. And that's needed. Why? Because if fear is the beginning of your wisdom, you're not going to fall for the love bombing the next time it happens. It's just not going to happen. You know, now, what's love bombing? Love bombing is someone who's really awesome to you at first and then slowly whittles away at you. Okay. You want to make sure that that's not the scenario. That is a fearful place. Usually it means that you've, you've gotten involved with a narcissist and because the narcissist is in control of how you feel, you want, you've fallen in love with the potential that they tried to show you, but they can show you how quickly they can discard you. And because your brain is hardwired to want what it doesn't want, you end up in a situation where they treat you badly and you're addicted to the highs and lows of how they might treat you. Not how they're treating you, how they might treat you. Because sometimes they'll they'll sit you back and they'll be good to you and they won't. Okay? This is this is behavior you must learn from. This is why fear, okay, should be the beginning of your wisdom. Whatever you learned when you were unconscious, that belongs at the forefront of your mind, at peace and able to say, okay, when I did this, I got that result. I didn't like that result, so now I'm gonna do something different. Because the only person you can change is you. And so you allow this fear, you work with it, not against. You allow this fear, okay, when I did this and this, I got these results. When I didn't care about myself, I got these results. I ended up entangled with these kind of people. This didn't work, it broke my heart. It, you know, these things, they treated me badly. You know, I learned from these things. If you learn from them, there's no reason that what you went through should be a continuous nightmare. You need to remember that whatever you went through when you were unconscious, you are not there anymore. You are not there anymore. So it should not be dictating your future moments. 
And that's what we're doing when we haven't caught up to the present moment. Okay? So when it says, let fear be the beginning of your wisdom, understand what it's saying. Understand what it's saying. It's saying two things. Please don't beat yourself up for what you didn't know. And secondly, remember that what you did got those results. So what you must do will get different results. And it has nothing to do with another person. As tempted as you are to look out there, it is not out there. Out there is merely being what you are being on the inside. This is why every spiritual teacher worth their salt will say you are what you're looking for. The kingdom is here. What you see out there is a reflective surface of who you are being in everything that you are always. There is no other. And so when you start looking at it like that, you can look outside for guidance because you're looking in the universal mirror of self and you use that to your advantage. You look outside simply to see, okay, where am I at? If you like what you're receiving, you're clearly on a good wavelength. You're being good inside. You're good on the inside, right? If you don't like what you're seeing, think, where did I let myself down? Did I... Did I chase after this guy? Did I, did I chase after this girl that showed me no love and attention? You know, uh, was I kind when they weren't? You know, these types of things. Was I in love with potential? Was I, the, did I realize that the ideas of their specialness come from me and not them? That there's nothing special about anything because all that they're doing is mirroring you on the inside and that you're the special one. And in order to receive that specialness, you must be that specialness. You see, there's no one to change but you. There's no work here but you. And here's the paradox. It looks backwards. It feels lonely. It feels like the opposite way. And I understand that. Most people are like, um, this is a crude joke and I'm sorry for the language, okay? But this is just between us and I feel like I can talk to you this way, right? So the joke is, yeah, yeah. Everybody says to love myself, but I can't lick my own. Okay? <laughs> and I, I get that. Okay? I get that. But temporarily put away your fleshly desires and start thinking with these two things about you first. And although it's a paradox, when you start doing this, okay, you will be a very strong force of nature. Last night during our group call, perhaps my favorite thing about what was said is that last night she said something along the lines of, I have no tolerance for silliness. Things go the way I say they go. And she was literally living that. She was a living example of that. So, and it wasn't just craziness in relationships. It could have been craziness from a doctor, you know? It could have been craziness from a doctor. Like my favorite thing she said last night, okay? You guys, you weren't on our mastermind call, so you didn't hear it. My favorite thing she said last night that really made my heart sing where I couldn't like, I just wanted to keep talking to her forever was this. She said the craziness, the hysterics that happen over my pregnancy is silly. I just, you know, the doctors say, this is what's going on. This is what the scan says. And with the most calm and very clear directive of source, she said, you read the scans wrong. And wasn't rude, wasn't mean. She's just letting you know you read the scans wrong. In other words, I'm not letting you, doctor, tell me about my condition, okay? You read the scans wrong. And she was nice about it, she walked away. Wouldn't you know it that the next day, the evening phone call from the doctor, hey, we got your scans wrong. You don't say. That's the life I'm offering you. That's the life I'm offering you. It goes where you go. But you must first know you. You must first allow your fear to be the beginning of your wisdom. You must first realize that all you have to do is be still and know. Be still and know who you are in the moment. And that will be reflected you don't know, you're going to be looking forever out there for what you need to be to yourself. So when it comes to love, if you've had your heart broken over and over again, yeah, you have some healing work to do because you have broken your heart over and over again. 
you compromised yourself. You sought after somebody that wasn't treating you well and it broke your heart. You sought that person. You made them more important than you. So when they cheated on you, naturally, it, it was going to happen. It had to because you see, you cheated on yourself first when you put them first. You cheated on yourself first when you put them first. Understand? No amount of pursuing someone out there that is not matching who you are to yourself will ever get you there. This is what makes me different. This is why I don't take advantage of people. This is why I don't work with everybody under the sun. Why I say, no, 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 no. <laughs> no. I do not want to spend forever trying to redirect your mind. You got to want it. You got to want it. Okay? That's what I want. I want for you guys to want this for yourselves because what you'll discover is some of the coolest things. So Carla just joined Okay, Carla did something really cool. She had nothing to lose and she put the seed money principle at work. So I'm going to share her story. It was really cool. She put the seed money principle at work and she literally gave away just $25 to charity. And she said her, she said how you pull money out of thin air when you give it away, expecting nothing in return. She claimed her tenfold return. She claimed her investment on the universe and she expected it, right? So it didn't just yield 10%, okay? It gave her much more than that. And that is the story in the book. You see, there was a gentleman in the seed money principle who um, was carrying something uh, on his way to the post office and he had a heavy hand. And as he was carrying something onto the post office, so I just wanna explain this to Carla too so she can understand that she literally lived the passage in the book. All right, so he was carrying something heavy to the post office and he passed a homeless man. And in that moment, he, he was like, oh, if only my hands weren't full, I would give him my change in my pocket. Whatever I have, I'd give it to him. And he walked past the homeless man and then he remembered the law. If you are tempted to give money and then you talk yourself out of it, you are talking, you, you're, that money will come out of you anyway because you were supposed to do that. That was your spirit telling you, give this money now. Okay. And so since he didn't, um, he recognized that in that second, he was like, that's a bullshit answer. I know the law. It's going to be taken from me. So he puts down his equipment. He goes back, he reaches in his pocket and this was a blind homeless man and he dumps whatever change. He has no idea what he gave the man, but everything he had in his pocket, he gave in that moment because he had to atone for that thought and then almost talking himself out of it, okay? So he did that and sure enough, the money was returned immediately, more than what he wanted, okay? A huge amount was given because in that moment, it wasn't the amount, do you understand? It was the intention behind it. So God multiplied it immediately. And so literally, this gentleman is teaching us how to print money out of thin air by simply giving some away. And that's what Carla lived. How cool is that? Ugh. Application, folks. Application. All she did was listen to a book, do what the book said. She had nothing to lose. And it proved itself. Not once, but twice. Not once, but twice. So as you can see, I never give you information that you cannot employ right away and prove it to yourself. Please listen. When I say these things, I say these things because I love you. I love you like I love myself and I cannot change my nature even if you want me to, okay? I cannot change my way of saying things for you. If you took offense, your feelings come from you. They don't come from me, okay? Same with me. When I take offense, I have to take ownership of that. They come from me. My interpretation of what I thought happened comes from me. So I'm not excluding myself when I say this, okay? But I'm not going to change the message because the message cannot change. It is you who must change for the message. That's how you become a doer of the word, but not a hearer, okay? It's got to be more than that. It's got to come from you in a good place come from that really good place that is you and you have to understand that okay so 
please do not fear life. God did not give you a spirit of fear. God did not give you a spirit of fear. In fact, in this paradox, I'm going to remind you one more time. When you are in the worst situations of your life, this is the, the best time to put your spirit to the test. When you've got nothing to lose, when you're backed in the corner, that's when you put your spirit to the test. Okay, so that maybe going forward, your spirit will go first, so you won't be backed into a corner. Spirit goes first, you won't fear anything, because you're seeing how, dude, nothing is permanent. Like, even if I, if I lack money, the minute I, you know, Brian's a great example, right? Um, he's, he's going through some things, and, and, and he was dwelling on it, and then he said, you know what, I'm going to stop thinking, I'm going to put it away, and sure enough, as he goes about his day, the answer comes to him. He used no mind. Perfectly. Answer came to him. Solution came to him. Right? And so this is the type of thing that you're going to have to practice. I can only lead you to water. I can't force you to drink it. But what I can do is help you, encourage you to do these things so that you discover them on your own. You make it your own. And then it's your testimony. You can be like, dude, it worked. It worked. You need to be your own evidence. I'm not going to do it for you. And perhaps that makes me that makes me not so popular. So be it. Okay? I'm not going to do it for you because um, the mistake that we made as Christ when we were Christ was that it was not a mistake. The message was not heard. Christ said it. Christ said over and over again, it's not my body. Stop paying attention to the individual in me. My consciousness does it all. My father does it all. Over and over again, he said this. Okay? So that's what you're after. And um, that understanding. That it's, it's not about the body itself. It's about trusting the spirit inside. When you have that, you do not have a spirit of fear. And I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. You're not afraid. You know, like me, I oh, look at the lovely little wolf. Let me go pet it. It likes me. You know, no fear. I know most people will be like, that's insane. No, because I'm not afraid. I'm God, remember? <laughs> okay. Everyone is God inside of themselves and you must discover this power. Okay. The idea is to become independent, not dependent on our coach. Yes. Yes. That's all I want. That's all I want. I want to retire just like everybody else. <laughs> Technically, I am retired from corporate life, but I'm not retired from this life until the last person says, I got it, I found heaven. Then I'll retire. Until then, I am doing my purpose and come what may. Okay. I want to be W. What does that mean, BW? Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. All right, you guys. Thank you so much. Um, let me see. Honestly, the manifesting community can be very toxic with some of the backwards ideas. Yes. Yes, Brian. I'm so sorry. That is so true. The, oh, fearless. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yes. It, it can be. It can be. And, and, you know, by toxicity, here's the thing. My basis of my foundation, you guys, is love. If it's not love and it doesn't behave like love, I can't get behind it. And that's why, although I know that even if you try to reach love by not loving, you will still end up at the same place yourself. So either way, you're going to end up where I'm at. And I don't care how long it takes you. But the one thing I will not do is conform so that I can fit in to society that wants this. Like, no, because I cannot lead a blind man into a ditch. You see, I cannot do that in good conscience. I just can't. And then you, then I lead you to the ditch. This is how this works, and it's really toxic. I lead you into the ditch, and then I, and then I sit here and I convince you how to get out, and you pay me for that. I can't do that. No, I this I refuse your money. I can't do that. No, I lead you to yourself. I don't even lead you to Cindy because Cindy, there's no one. There's nobody. Okay? God in you is everything and your reality and you must find it in order to enjoy your life. And a lot of people have 
trouble with the word God. A lot of people have trouble with the word, you know, spirituality and religion only because they don't understand it. And, and granted, the teachers didn't understand it. Okay? False prophets didn't understand it. It's clear because as soon as you make it secular history instead of a metaphysical history that describes how to interact in this world by the way that it behaves and that it tells you the dark and the light and explains Satan as the opposing force, not an evil enemy, but something that, that it, it, they counter the polarity of this world. It explains everything how earth is made in your image over and over again it tells you do not fear if you fear you're using my law backwards and all the crap will come over to you and people read that and thought "Ooh, god's mean no he was telling you look my laws works forward and reverse now if you catch the reverse side by fearing <laughs> okay those things will happen so i'm trying to tell you please don't fear if you fear it creates things that you don't want that's why it must be the beginning of your wisdom. So you can become aware once you become conscious of that. Okay? And lastly, I'm going to leave you with this thought. God afraid is man. Equally so, a man who is no longer afraid becomes aware how they are God. That's it. So work with it. I love you guys. I hope you appreciated these stories. Hope you understand them. And um, again, with Bibles, you guys, let me explain something to you. The message is the same. The language changes a bit, okay? But the gist of it is the same. It doesn't really matter which translation because all of it is being mistranslated. Every, everything. Everything has been mistranslated because here's the problem. We're using Middle Eastern customs, ways of describing things, and so the English equivalent is not even coming close. It's not coming close at all. In fact, Hebrew is a fourth dimensional language of which English can't even come close. And so we are never going to have the best accurate description. It's going to be a relationship between you and God. So if those of you who are asking me which Bible, I don't care which Bible you use. I don't. Okay? I really don't. It doesn't matter if it's the King James or the New English Translation or whatever. The gist of the message is the same. The core truths are the same. What we're looking to understand is how, what it is that it's talking about. So for example, okay, uh, when it talks about the female or the wife, okay, when it's talking about this, it's talking about your subconscious. This is inside everyone. When it's talking about the male or the light. So lastly, it forms people, but that is the outermost illusion of, of, of these words. And they're the last thing that counts. The other stuff counts first, and if we don't understand that, then it doesn't really matter who translated what, okay? So I hope that helps. I hope you understand these things. I hope they start to register, continue to employ these things, because here's the best part. Last night, when I said to you guys, listen, before God gave me that vision where God showed me when I opened the book and God showed me a kingdom and a key and I understood directly if you if you continue to read this with me before that happened I hated the Bible I wouldn't come close it, it, the icky energy that I felt from it, the control that I bought into all that stuff too right and so it was because my soul on some level must have known it's not being taught correctly, but I hadn't yet bridged that gap. After God did that, God tells me what to say, when to say it, how to say it, everything. Like literally, like here's what I meant. So it doesn't matter. I, I don't even like, honestly, I know everyone thinks I know the Bible like the back of my hand. No, this is God speaking through me in the moment. And I learn with you and I share it with you. And so that's what's different about me. And all of you have that connection within yourselves. It's not about the book per se. It's about your understanding and the willingness to sit meditatively long enough to understand what these words are. But 
there are a lot of metaphoric clues about language translation. Like I've mentioned before, it's all language because in the Middle East, if you said something was on the rocks, you meant it was on a solid foundation, right? So if you say, oh, it's on the rocks, it's on a solid foundation. If you say that here in the Western world, something's on the rocks, it's terrible. So as you can see, the language itself, you must understand the culture, the time, the, the, the references that were given, and also understand that at the time, these teachers that were teaching these things that really truly understood these words were thousands of years ahead of their time to trying to minister to a people who didn't have education, who were being segregated, who were being told you can only reach the church through these means and, and they kept them illiterate, okay? We are going beyond that now. We're going way beyond that and yet the truth, the universal truths don't change and the meaning and the foundation doesn't change. And the more you learn about them, you will have control and dominion over your earth. You will decide whether it's going to be sunny today or cloudy. You will decide, right? You will decide so many wonderful things. But the most important skill you will ever gain is the fact that no matter what happens, you know you can handle it. And so then it doesn't become a matter of what happens, but how you handle it with your spirit. So, thank you guys. Hope that helps. <laughs> I'm just reading the comments, just trying to catch up, make sure I miss any questions. Oh, thank you, Christy. All right, you guys, thank you so much. And I love you, and I really hope that this sit in. Sets in.